have current sense amplifiers done for you lately? Well, probably quite a lot. Especially if you're working on an industrial automation, telecom, server, or battery operated design, you know well how current sense amplifiers can provide a great solution for power monitoring, overcurrent protection, and system diagnostics. But if you're not working on one of those types of designs, you might need a refresher. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Not sure what current sense amplifiers are or why you would need them? Well, you've come to the right place. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Seema Venkatesh from Analog Devices joins me to discuss the what, why, and how of current sense amplifiers. We take a closer look at their functional capabilities, investigate why high precision current sense amplifiers can be a critical addition to your system, and we take a closer look at how the Max 480 current sense amplifiers with their on the fly programmability and ultra low offset voltage can solve a variety of design challenges in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Analog Devices. Hi, Seema. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about current sense amplifiers today. But Seema, before we get started, can you set the stage for us? What exactly is a current sense amplifier? Of course, let's start with the basics. So a current sense amplifier is a special purpose amplifier, and it measures a very small voltage drop across the sense resistor. And it outputs a voltage that's proportional to the current that's flowing through that sense resistor. You can also call the sense resistor as a shunt resistor. So if you look at the figure on the right, you can see that the V battery is 36 volts. But the VDD, which is the supply for the current sense, is at 3.3. So the reason why we call it special purpose is because the current sense amplifier can take in voltage ranges much higher than its supply rails. So the internal network is built in such a way that it allows the component to take in much wider and much larger voltage ranges. So once the voltage drop is measured, it amplifies the signal and outputs to the ADC, which is normally part of the microcontroller. In some cases, the ADC is also integrated into the current sense amplifier, and we call that a digital CSA. So the current sense amplifiers are perfect for power monitoring applications where you want to monitor current and power on certain voltage rails in your system for system diagnostics. If you want to see what part of your application is drawing more current and which is not for over current protection and battery management systems. Fantastic. Now, Seema, what factors do I need to consider when I'm looking for current sense amplifiers? There are multiple factors that are available and that you need to consider. But some of the most important ones would be the four that I'm showing on the slides. Let's start with the direction of current. If you have an application where you want to measure the current only flowing in one direction, for example, a power supply, then you call that a unidirectional current sense amplifier. But if you want to measure the current that's flowing through the shunt resistor in two directions, then you call that a current sense amplifier. So for example, a motor control where it's moving clockwise or anti-clockwise. So the second one is the output format, where if you have an analog output, then that's an analog CSA. And most of the current sense amplifiers that you find are analog, but there are some digital current sense amplifiers where the ADC is integrated. And the interface is normally I squared C or an SPI, and you communicate to the current sense using that interface. Then we have the sensing. You can have a high side or a low side. For high side, your sense resistor is sitting between your supply and the load. And for the low side, it's sitting between your load and the ground. So the high side has certain advantages. Like you can measure voltages ranging from low to high, but for the low side, it's mostly only the low voltages and 
it's a very inexpensive option for the low side, but the low side has ground noise and as well as you cannot detect short circuits in the system. And finally, we have the robust protection. If you have galvanic isolation inside your current sense, then we call that an isolated current sense. And that's normally good for applications that are running at very, very high voltages, like hundreds of voltages. And then we, of course, we have the non-isolation, which is uh, no galvanic isolation in the system. Okay, so Seema, can you tell me about Maxim's current sense amplifiers? Sure. So Maxim has a large portfolio of high precision current sense amplifiers. When I say high precision, I mean that the offset voltages are very low. So we have parts that go as low as plus or minus 0.5 microvolts, which is very low offset. And the maximum would be plus or minus 12 microvolts, which again is a very high precision CSAs. So keeping that as a baseline, we have a portfolio that can be segmented into three. First, we have the low voltage CSAs that are good for applications with common modes below 48 volts. So consumer applications or servers and some industrial applications as well. And these are tiny. We have parts that are one millimeter square. Sometimes they're lower. And we also have low power parts. A lot of them are around few micro amperes, but we have parts that are below one micro ampere, which is very small. And the second one is the high voltage CSAs, which have common modes above 48 volts. We have parts that go up to 76 volts. And these are great for automotive applications, motor control, high voltage telecom, high voltage industrial. And they also have protection on them. So against high voltage spikes in the system. And finally, we also have digital CSAs with the ADC integrated in them. Here you can see that they have I2C interface, SPI or SM bus, whatever the customer wants. We have alarms that we provide if there are any overcurrent or over voltage situations. There's also parts with power calculation in them, which means that the part itself has a multiplier inside the part. So it just multiplies the voltage and current and the microcontroller doesn't have to measure the power. So you're removing the overhead in microcontrollers. Okay, so Seema, why is high precision so important here? That is a great question. So high precision is critical for your system because it directly dictates the size of your sense resistor, how much power it dissipates, and what's the cost. So if you take an example for a target system accuracy of 2.5%, And if the customer wants the current range to be between one ampere to five ampere, and he or she chooses a CSA with offsets of 100 microvolts, which actually is not that bad, but it's still not high precision. If you do the calculations, which is basic Ohm's law, you get a resistor of four milliohms, and which dissipates 125 milliwatts of power, which is a lot of power. And then if you choose a precision CSA with 25 microvolts, you can get a resistor of 1.2 milliohms, which is much smaller than the 4 milliohm, dissipates less power at 30 milliwatts. And you can also see that the accuracy spec is relaxed. So the resistor on the right side is 1%, which means that you can choose a resistor which is lower accuracy, which means it impacts your cost directly. So to summarize, if you choose a CSA with much lower offsets, you can have 60% smaller CSA with 4x lower power and lower bomb cost for this example. Okay, cool. Now, Seema, what does your high precision current amplifier look like and what does it buy me as an engineer? That's a good question. So we have a newer CSA, the MAX 480, which is also the fastest sample rate digital CSA we have. There's nothing that comes close to it in the market. So with the one mega samples per second that we provide, you can detect really fast current transients in the system. Because these days, a lot of applications are high speed. There's a lot of digital signals going around in the system. And if you want to detect any fast current transients, this CSA can do it. And then this also provides on the fly programmable gain which means that you can measure a really wide range of currents. For example, if you want to measure 10 milliamps versus 10 amps in the system, 
you can do that with this current sense amplifier. You can just change the gain on the fly using I squared C and then measure both those current levels pretty accurately. And again, as I've mentioned before, our portfolio has many high precision CSAs and the 480s also a high precision CSA with very low offsets of plus or minus five microvolts, which enables you to use smaller sense resistors. Okay, so Seema, what kind of applications would this MAX 480 be a good fit for? The 480 is accurate, it's flexible, it has small size, so it can be used for a wide range of applications. So if you want fast charging systems, if you want to detect fast current transients, that's a good fit. The small size is ideal for portables, battery operated, wearables technology, and also servers, telecom, and base station also need high accuracy, the wide common mode as well. And even industrial automation also needs current sense amplifiers. So it can pretty much go into a lot of markets because it's a very versatile device and provides a lot of flexibility to address a wide range of problems. Okay, so Seema, can we dig into the details of the MAX 480 and look under the hood a bit? Of course. The MAX 480 is a one mega samples per second. It goes from negative 0.1 to 36 volts. So it's bi-directional. It's in a small package of two millimeters square. If you look at under the hood, you can see that the CSA measures both current and voltages. And the ADC here that we have is a 13 bit one mega samples per second. It has a fairly a wide bandwidth of 50 kilohertz. And on the right, you can see that there is a wake up feature that we have, which means that the CSA can be put in sleep mode and it only measures current every 50 milliseconds. So if you have a threshold that's already predetermined and the CSA measures current that goes above the threshold, then it wakes up. So we have these features put in place in order to save power. And then we have the programmable overcurrent over voltage thresholds where you have predetermined thresholds that's already in place. And if the CSA measures any currents going above that threshold or above that voltage, then you can use the alarm feature to alert the system that you're in an overcurrent situation. The interface that we use is the I squared C where you can read both the voltage and the currents. You can also use it to change the gain on the fly. And then we have the peak current log, which stores the maximum current value among a range of samples. Okay, cool. Now, Seema, can you elaborate on the programmable gain and what is the advantage here? So the programmable gain is a very cool feature, uh, which enhances the dynamic range of a current sense amplifier. So what do I mean by that? If you look at the slide, you can see that I'm showing you the max 480, the offset is 25 microvolts. Let's take an example of R sense one ohm. And the customer now is trying to measure currents that fall as low as 50 microamps and as high as 50 milliamps. So that's almost a thousand times more. So three orders of magnitude. And considering that the R sense is one ohm, this gives us both the sense voltage as 50 microvolts to 50 millivolts. So the error at the higher range at 50 millivolts is 0.05%, which is very negligible for an offset of 25 microvolts. But the error at 50 microvolts is really large. It's 50%. So for a VOS of 25, if you have a 50 microvolts signal that you're trying to measure, you can either measure 75 microvolts or 25 microvolts. It can fall anywhere between that range, which means the error is really large. So what you can do is you can use a gain of 125, which can be programmed on the fly for the 480. And if you use a gain of 125 for the lower range, let's say less than 10 millivolts, this is just an arbitrary number I'm using for this example, then the voltage that the ADC sees is 1.25 volts at 10 milliamp current range, which is obviously much larger than the ADC's LSB. So there's no error in the system. And also on the lower side, the ADC is measuring 6.25 millivolts instead of 
the 50 microvolts that we initially wanted to measure. So I'm sorry, I'm throwing out a lot of numbers, but what I'm just trying to say is if you have lower range of currents, then you can use a higher gain. And if you have a higher range of currents that you're trying to measure, then you can use a lower gain option and you can change the gain on the fly instead of using a different CSA on the system in order to achieve the same result. So to conclude, if you use the gain of 125, your error at the lower range is now below 2.5%, which is very low. So we went from 50% to 2.5% by changing the gain on the fly. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Seema, what kind of benefits does this solution bring to the table? The 480 has many benefits that it can provide the system. So for one, it can go as low as 1.7 volts on its supply. So it's good for low voltage applications. It's very accurate because of the lower offset voltage. Also, the sample rate is high, so you can oversample your inputs, which can increase accuracy. You have smaller packets, so saving board space. The programmable gain also enhances dynamic range. We have smart mode, which saves power. So by varying the sample rate, you can get as low as 13 microamps per operating current. And then at full speed, at one megasamples per second, the operating current is around 2.7 milliamps. Now, Seema, doesn't 2.7 milliamps seem a little high? That is true. 2.7 milliamps is pretty high, and we do understand that. But you're also getting a lot for that power consumption. The sample rate that we have on the 480 is 64x higher than any other alternate solution that we have on the market. The signal bandwidth is also rather high at 50 kilohertz. So the 2.7 milliamps is for a part that is performing at significant higher performance. But if the customer does not want to use one mega samples per second, we also have smart modes in the system which means we have 16 dynamically selectable sample rates. So you can just change the sample rate on the fly and then you can reduce the current. So at low power mode, that 2.7 milliamps reduce to almost 52 microampere, which is very low. And then standby mode is also two microamps, which is also pretty low. All right, so Seema, where can my audience go to learn more? So if you're ready to learn more, you can get the EV kit from the website. You can order the Max 480 EV kit pound. You can also go through some of the application notes that we have available. Uh, you can read through a tutorial. And if you have any further questions, you can always contact us through the link that I've shown. Excellent. Well, Seema, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.